How you doing everybody? This is Phil from New York Rocks and we're rocking down here at the Funkadelic in Times Square and I'm sitting next to no other than author, musician, Gordon <laughs> G.G. You got Kepper. it? Kepper. Yeah, right. how you doing? Great. Good. It's Dang nice it, to man. have you down, finally. Finally. Yeah. It's been a long time. We've yeah, we've to get been this on together. Facebook and we're talking, you know, the whole big Kiss connection, mm -hmm. Ace Freely. Okay, and we're going to get into that, but first we want to talk about how you started out in the music business because you're a musician first, yeah. you started out. So mm -hmm. tell everybody where you're from and how you started out in the music business. Uh, I was born in Yonkers, uh -huh. and uh, of course, why do we all want to play music when we're young in high school mm -hmm. and everything? Because we want to get girls, Of I course, think, right? that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. come on. I mean, come on, yeah, that's yeah. the truth. Well, the girls goes. love the music, and they always well, kind of always love the musicians, <laughs> right? <laughs> So yeah. it was, uh, and when cool. playing the music with the bands in, in high school and stuff yeah. like that, you got to eat, you got to meet girls easier. Okay. So it was really cool. But I, I, as I went along, all mm -hmm. my friends that in high school they all dropped out and got real jobs, yeah, yeah. and I was the idiot that kept playing music. So. But what, what was your instrument of choice? Uh, keyboards. I was. Keyboard. I, I, keyboards. I loved uh, yeah. Emerson, Lincoln, Palmer, right, right. and yeah, I was a progressive rock guy. I was into. Uh -huh. ELP, yes, uh, Genesis, all you know, all yeah, the yeah. crazy crap back uh -huh. then. Mm -hmm. And then all my friends were into Kiss, yeah, yeah. and they were all into you know the uh, three chord rock. Okay. And, and we were like snobs playing the progressive right. rock stuff. Right. And so we thought we were cool because we were playing yeah. all that complicated rock. And meanwhile, the yeah. three chord rock was easier, yeah. and mm -hmm. you were getting more girls with that. Now you were in some bands. Let's talk about some of the bands that you were you know you were in a couple. When of I bands. when I started out, you I, started out and then progressed to. I started playing late. I, I mm -hmm. was 15 years old when I first started touching right. the keyboard, and I was 15. <laughs> That's when you start. 15, late. you start touching a lot of things. Yeah, you're touching. Right? Yeah, I was touching. I was touching <laughs> the organ. <yeah. laughs> so, <laughs> so okay. Uh, 15 years old, and then when uh, once I graduated, 18 years old, I was touring with Donna Summers, doing oh. the uh, doing wow. the USO shows. So I was playing with her backup band, and I was flying off to uh, the craziest place I flew to was uh, the North Pole. Wow. I was up in Greenland, North, <laughs> <laughs> Thule, Greenland. It up, still worked up in the yeah, North Pole. Yeah, it was, it was crazy. Yeah. So I, I and you know how they got me to go up to the North Pole? Wow. They told me there's a girl behind every tree. I was like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and then I get uh, up there, and there's no trees. There's Eskimos and uh, <laughs> no trees. Igloos, right? Yeah. After you were touring with Donna Summer, you played with other musicians? Yeah, and then I came, yeah. I came back, and then, uh, I mean, it was really weird. There was a club called the Rising Sun in Yonkers, right. and everybody, when we were in high school, we all looked at playing that club in Yonkers, yeah. and we said, you made it big yeah. when you played that club, right. right? And everybody was aspiring to play the Rising Sun. Sure. So I never got to play the Rising Sun. Yeah. I come all the way back from that right. tour, and I start playing with a local band, mm -hmm. and they go, yeah, next week we're playing the Rising Sun. I go, I don't want to play that dump. <laughs> <laughs> That's over now. Yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah. It was, yeah, everything's in perspective. Yeah. Cool. So yeah, I was playing with local bands, and then uh, after that, let me see. I, you know, odd working, doing the odd jobs during the day, right. trying to play music. And I, I was playing with a band called Spoiled Rotten, and they oh, played right. six nights a week. Mm -hmm. It was like the keyboards. hey, yeah, keyboards. It was like the heyday of of like working in clubs. Original music. Yeah. No, yeah, they were playing. Them. No, they were playing Van Halen. Yeah. There was all covers oh, and everything. Cool. And we're playing the tri-state area yeah. every single night. For, right. I've been pretty much six nights a week. And okay. we take one night off. But I, I was, you know, for like two, three years. Just I'm going to go right into this. How did you meet Ace Frehley uh, from Kiss? Uh, that, How did that relationship start? When and where was the first time you met Ace Frehley? It, it, and you became friends, actually. It's right? all geography. Yeah. That's how it comes down to geography. Right. I grew up in Yonkers. Right. Uh, there was a guy named Bobby McAdams who right. used to cut hair for Kiss. And, you know, right. and he was he was best friends with Ace. All right. For, uh, before he, they even joined, you know, before Ace even joined Kiss, they were friends. They were friends. They were oh. best friends. And, and they and, lived from the Bronx. And they were lived in the Bronx. Yeah, because yeah, he was from uh, Arthur Avenue or something. Uh, right off Arthur. I forgot one. I forgot the street. Once. But in that area. Or something. Yeah, they were yeah. in the Bronx. All right. And they were a couple. Of, they were like blocks away from mm -hmm. each other. So right. Like blocks away from each other is like a mm -hmm. world apart. Yeah, yeah. When you're growing yeah, up in the Bronx. Big city, right? Yeah. So. So, um, so yeah, so Bobby was best friends with Ace, and right. he owned a studio called uh, Backstreet Studio in oh, the Bronx. Right. And all the guys from Yonkers used to rehearse there. Right. And we'd see, and Ace was Bobby's best friend. So right. we, we'd be rehearsing there and recording. It was yeah. a recording studio. So you met Bobby first? I met Bobby you? McAdams right. first, and, right. but that wasn't my connection to yeah, Ace. Yeah, yeah. It was back in the day when right. Ace was big with wow. Kiss. Yeah. And I was never a big Kiss fan. Yeah, I yeah. hate to say that I was back then. 
Well, and you don't want to make too I many know too enemies. many enemies <laughs> saying that. Uh, but I think there's a point to me saying that. Because it gets better. Yeah. yeah. So um, when we were uh, yeah, rehearsing, yeah. Bobby owned that studio, but Ace would come in with, with you know, uh, a case of beer and a girl, yeah, 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 yeah. you know, in the studio. And, all, all and my, that's before Kiss? That was during Kiss. Dorn I mean, Kiss. during the heyday of Kiss. Oh, We're really? talking the late 70s. Okay. Right. Yeah. Ace would walk in with the, with the case of beer yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, the, and the chick and he'd Party ta time, tackle, yeah, it. and he'd go in the all back, right. he'd, he'd be doing his roll, thing. Man. Right, rock and roll. roll. Yeah. And he'd crack up his cars all the time. Oh, you know, man. he had brand new Cadillacs, he'd smash <laughs> them up. And, and we were like, oh, wow. Well, yeah. Everybody kind of was living a little wild in the 70s. Sure, Ace was probably in his 20s. Yeah, yeah he was in his 20s. And, uh, and uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I hate to tell yeah. you my age, I'm older than you. Yeah, but we look but, good, yeah. man. We look <laughs> yeah. good. Huh? You know what? Uh, it's rock and roll. <laughs> Girls and rock and roll. Ace yeah. is still around. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know? I mean, you're lucky, right? So, yeah, yeah, so we'd be in the studio, and all my all the guys that were in yeah, my yeah. band would go, right. oh my God, this is really, we could play. Right. Like, we, they'd use his guitar yeah, yeah. and not wash their hands for a yeah. week and stuff. And I didn't really get it. I was like, all right, yeah, that's Ace Freely from Kiss. So years later, this is where, right. so I was okay. an I didn't become friends with Ace yeah. then. Yeah. Um, it was, I mean, Bobby McAdams was our guy to cut our hair back then. He'd give oh, us so the rods. Who you? He, yeah, yeah, he would give the Rod Stewart, yeah. he, you know, the, the cool. rooster cuts and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, friends with Bobby, and we'd see him with Ace, like right. in the clubs and stuff, like Rising Sun. Uh, uh, no, the Glen Island Casino in New, mm -hmm. New Rochelle. In the 80s, yeah. it was like late 84, 85, something, right. somewhere around there. And Ace was, do it was before his first album, The Frilly's Comedy. But the real connection, how you really became personal friends with him, came when he left Kiss. Yeah, he, the first time I ran into yeah. him, like after those days, mm -hmm. and I, where I ran into Ace, right. he, we, we had a mutual friend, uh, this girl Linda. Right. And, and, uh, and Ace was having an affair with, with mm -hmm. my best friend, oh, okay. Linda. And Linda would, I'd go down the city and Linda go, would go, you, you know, you gotta meet up with Ace. You gotta meet up with him, he's a great guy. Yeah. Uh, I said, yeah, I know about, I know Bobby McAdams. Yeah. And this, no, but, but Ace was but married, Ace, wasn't yeah, married? Ace was married, yeah. but he was having an affair oh, with okay. Linda. Rock and roll guy. Yeah, you know? and Linda was gorgeous. Oh, okay. I mean, she was a model, yeah. she was a yeah. celebrity in Manhattan, yeah. all the clubs and everything. There's a lot of girls, you know, they want, they want to be hang out with rock Yeah, they're good, they're, and she was, know, she was talented know. in her own right. Yeah. And she was, she was really <laughs> glamorous, cool. everybody knew yeah. her. Yeah, everybody mm -hmm. knew Linda. Uh -huh. So we'd go to lime, Limelight, right. walk right in, free, you know. Yeah. I was with Linda and went everywhere. Okay. She was Thank huge in the, in the New York club scene. Uh, she was the yeah. first one that became the celebutante. She uh -huh. coined that term. I, I'll do a side story about Linda. It's great. Right. Uh, this, this is how popular Linda was. Uh, I went to the Limelight one night, and, uh, mm -hmm. and we used to play a game, who knew the bigger celebrity? Right. You know, Linda and I would yeah. go out, and she, she introduced me to, you know, uh, Duran, the guys from Duran yeah, Duran, yeah. John Taylor and stuff like that. She'd stick her tongue out and go, I know this guy, I know yeah, that guy. Yeah. It was a game between us. Mm -hmm. So one day we go to the limelight, we're up in the VIP room, mm -hmm. and she goes, um, I'm gonna go walk around, talk to my friends here, these are cool guys. Now right? she would get you in because the shoe yeah, was on, she, not she, Ace or anything No, like she that. knew everybody, uh -huh. and, I, I, and everybody thought I was her brother for uh -huh. some reason, <laughs> you know, they were going, oh, there's Linda's good brother. Yeah. Not good for you. Yeah, right? And <laughs> yeah, she goes, talk to these guys. So we're sitting in the VIP room, Room. I right. go, oh, well, what do you guys do? Everybody's full of shit. You know, yeah. they're all they're all giving yeah. their stories. And I go, we have, we work with Steven Spielberg. And I go, yeah, all right, you work with Spielberg. Uh, the the flower that talked. Uh, Help me out, guys. Little, little sharp of heart. Thank you. Oh yeah. my God. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh, it was a while ago. Yeah, yeah. Right. it was a while ago. The plant ate everybody. Yeah. So they're, they're, talk, they're, they're talking about little yeah. sharp of yeah. yeah. Thank you, guys. Yeah. So uh, they're talking about, uh, and they're deciding whether to make a movie or right. a play. So you know, I'm talking to these guys, and they're, and they're right. going, they're going, uh, should we make a movie or a play? And, I, and they ask me, and I go, well, you should make the, you should film the play. It's cheaper. And yeah. they're like, oh yeah, that ain't bad. But they made the movie and made billions of dollars, right? Yeah. So Rick while we're, was yeah, there. Rick Moranis. So while we're talking about yeah, that, who comes walking in? Steven Spielberg. Right. I go, oh, uh, these guys aren't full of shit. Spielberg walks over and you sits. They were just playing. Yeah. Yeah, Spielberg sits next to me when we're having drinks and everything. And they yeah. introduce me, and I'm with these guys, so I'm like hanging yeah. out with Steven Spielberg. Yeah. So in my, I see wow. in the corner of my eye, I see Linda coming. Mm -hmm. I'm going, 
shit, I am gonna, I'm gonna blow her away. I'm gonna introduce her to Steven Spielberg. Yeah. She starts walking over and I'm going, I'm going in my mind, this is gonna be so cool. I've just about introduced yeah. Linda to Steven Spielberg. Mm -hmm. Spielberg turns around and goes, Linda, how you doing? And I'm like, oh, he blew your spot oh, yeah. up. Right? Like, and she, that's what we call it. And she, yeah. spot up, you know? she, she hugs yeah. him and sticks her tongue out behind uh -huh. it over his shoulder yeah. at me. I go, well, I was giving her the finger. Gotcha. Yeah? So that's how popular Linda was. Uh -huh. you know? So uh, to get back on track with yeah. the, um, <laughs> She was having an affair with Ace, and she kept on saying, you know, we should hang out. You know, Ace is really cool. Right. You like him. You, you have a lot of common interests. Mm -hmm. He's into science. I was a big science guy, space, right. you know, it. the NASA yeah. stuff right. and all that. Cool. And, and she goes, no, you guys would get along. So great. So the tragedy of this was Linda passed away. Oh. Yeah, Linda, Linda uh, uh, she od But back. you sort of knew Ace from coming in that Yeah, yeah I, I would never really paid so yeah, much we, mind. We nodded hello, and yeah. that's it. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't Ace a big know, deal. Yeah. You were a musician anyhow. Yeah, I was, I was working all the time, yeah. recording and stuff like Couldn't that. Couldn't really and, have time. Uh, yeah, whatever. to hang out socially with him. It wasn't so. like Emerson, Lincoln Palmer. You're like, the, if you would have seen Carl Palmer or one of those guys. Yeah, then it's like God Emerson, to me, which Keith I Emerson. became friends with Keith Emerson out. now, yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is funny. Um, all right, so then getting back to Linda and so, Ace. So uh, Linda, pa Linda passed away. And... Right. Uh, and uh, yeah, Ace didn't go to the wake or anything. Uh, she was friends with Billy Idol and things like that. And uh, and uh, I they were partying yeah, together yeah. a little bit. So like, I I, I uh, the wake happened and all that. And then a couple of weeks it's later, sad. I was playing um, I was playing the New Rochelle at Big Pussy from The Sopranos. Yeah, right. The cra he owned a club called The Crazy Horse. Mm. Okay. And I, uh, I was playing at the club in yeah. New Rochelle, okay. the crazy horse, and playing there. Right. And who comes walking in was a guy named Ira, and with a with Ace. Yeah. And and, uh, and that was like the first time you seen him after the fact. after the wait after, after the, the fact of Linda dying. So yeah, Ira, yeah. I I performed. I got off right. the stage. Yeah. Ace is at the bar, and Ira introduces me. Ace, I go. Uh -huh. Ace this is Gordon. Gordon Ace. I go. Yeah. And he he's, he's a shy guy. Yeah, yeah. So I start talking to him at the bar. Right. And I go, uh, Ace, you know, you knew my friend Linda. And, and he goes, Linda? And I go, Linda, Susan Bach. And he turned to me, he goes, holy shit, you're Gordon. You're the guy she always talked about yeah, yeah. with me. She always wanted us wow. to get together. Yeah. And I go, yeah. I, I, and he goes, oh, I'm sorry, buddy. And he was like, really sincerely yeah. sorry. He shook my hand. Yeah, yeah. But I, I, he goes, I mean, sorry you missed the wake so and everything. Girls. I mean, yeah, right. Ace really. Yeah, but Linda was special, right? You know, and and he knew it, I knew it, yeah. and 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 from the, so I mean, he kind of felt bad that whatever happened. Yeah, whatever, like I mean, he, it, it wasn't, he, he was uh, sincerely like fucked up over it. You know? Yeah. So you right. know, we talked at the bar, and Ira I knew who, who yeah. was a bass player, and he wrote yeah. for Stevie Wonder and stuff like that. Ira was a, you know a big producer and big bass player, funk yeah. guy. And uh, he was with Ira, and Ira knew he was the one who really introduced me to Ace. Mm -hmm. So we talked, and Ace goes, uh, you know, can I have your number? And yeah. he saw me play and everything, and, yeah. they, and he goes, so what else do you do in this and that? I said, here's my number. You know, I didn't think any of anything didn't of think it. think he was going to call. Why nah, would he call I was like, me all right, yeah. Why would he bother with me? Here's my number, you yeah. know, you call, you call. Sure. So about a week later, uh, um, and I was living with my parents at the time. Yeah. I get a phone. I remember it was a, it was eleven. It was right after eleven o'clock because I was watching the Honeymooners. Yeah, <laughs> that's how we on. that's how we told time back then. Yeah. Honeymooners channel were on eleven p channel eleven eleven p.m. Yeah. So my mother uh, get, the phone rings and, and she goes, "Yeah, he's here." Uh, you know, Gordon. I, yeah. I I answer the I answer the phone and he goes, uh, "I go, yeah, who's gonna?" He goes, "Hey, it's Curly. It's, it's Curly. Yeah, it's, it's, it's Ace." <laughs> called he everybody knows, Curly. Yeah, he called everybody Curly because he couldn't remember everybody's name. He goes, <laughs> "Hey, Curly, cool. it's the Ace, right?" Yeah. And it didn't sound like him. He had yeah. like a deep voice, and yeah. Ace doesn't have a deep voice. Right. I know his voice. And, and, I go, this is not Ace. Who the fuck is this? So I think I'm getting a crank call, right? right? So he goes, uh, it's Ace Frehley. I, I, go, um, I go, all right, yeah, <laughs> what's, what's going on? He goes, um, I'm recording, and um, I want you to come, come down and help me. And I go, um, yeah, what, you know, what do you need? He goes, you, you know, I, yeah. back then I had a company that had samples. That, you know, on the yeah. keyboard, that's, it was huge back then. It was new. So you can listen yeah. to that. Yeah, you yeah. had sampling 
stuff on the keyboard and then you trigger off all these wackies. He goes, I got an idea, I want to sample stuff, I want to use your company and everything. Mm -hmm. I go, all right, what, you know, when do you want to have an appointment? He goes, no, I want you to come down now. I go, yeah, all right, yeah, where are you? He goes, I'm in the city. Yeah. I go, all right, I'll pack up my stuff, I'll, I'll come down. And he yeah. lived on 67th Street wow. in his apartment. Yeah, yeah. So I went down to his apartment, I got down there around 12.30 at night, mm -hmm. drove down. Mm -hmm. um, Went into a small apartment, but it was way up on the, you know, 40th floor or whatever the hell. Yeah. It was really high up. You had your keyboard. I had my keyboard and everything. And then we just started working together. And, that, and then from that day on, we bonded. Okay. And then Ace was on was the Was that from the, any of his albums? Yeah, it was for the first release? Release comp release comp yeah. first release comedy okay. album. Okay. So you played the keyboards on the album, or you just like kind of like... I did the samples. Yeah. Samples. Yeah. Oh, okay. You, you know, if you listen to Breakout, yeah. you know, song Breakout. Right. You know, know Todd. The, yeah, John John. Howard. Yeah. Uh, but you know the beginning where he goes, boom, yeah, yeah, all yeah, that? Yeah. Those are samples. Those are right. from my keyboard. All right. So I, I did those samples so for you kind of got that sound from mm -hmm. the you guys. So, something moved. You. There was a reverse scream and stuff. All the effects that are on right. that Fraley's coming yeah. out is all the shit. I got I beesh. I'm gonna tell yeah, you. there you go. <laughs> All right, so then so we bonded there. Bonded with that. So <laughs> actually, did they use your they, so they use your keyboard playing though on the album? Yeah, or on or um, on the which uh, I'm Todd, trying to I think the, of, Tom somebody, did most of the keyboard. He knew how to play keyboards. Yeah, well, he's great. He's so talented. Yeah, he played guitar, I just, keyboard. I just saw Todd in Helsinki, I mean, Finland, like three oh, weeks. Oh wow, yeah, you were yeah, at the Kiss Expo. The Kiss Expo I, in Helsinki. Yeah, yeah. I follow what's going yeah. on. Yeah. Over there, you know. So yeah, this is so great. So now all of a sudden. Uh, you got involved with Ace now, and you became like kind of friends. Now. Yeah, we we became because best of that. friends because wow. of that. It was why, I mean Ace. After I did that in his apartment, he called yeah. me, called me the next week, and it was weird stuff. He he would call me up and say, "Hey Gordon, could you come help me move? Right. Help me move." He I moved around like, a lot. Yeah, I, I felt like it. Seinfeld. When yeah. remember when. Um, uh, Jerry Seinfeld became friends with Keith Hernandez. Yeah. And like, you know, it's it it yeah, his it idol, awkward. baseball idol. It was like awkward. awkward. But then, but then um, mm. uh, Keith Hernandez called him up to help him, uh, oh, to bring him to the airport or uh, something. Yeah. That's what I felt like. It was like Ace was asking for a favor that you asked. Like he a, needed a, a long a guy, time friend, a, a companion. I'm uh, a new friend, though. You were his bromance. They called it bromance. <laughs> yeah. You were the bromance. So he, he, right, go ahead. he said, yeah, he calls me up to move some stuff from his garage and everything. I, I, I thought it was strange. I go, all right, I'll come up and help you out. It was like, it was weird. Now that we lived in different places. Yeah, he lived, lived in Tarrytown, and then and then he had the apartment down in Manhattan. Yeah. So then I started helping move stuff. Then we called next week. The next week he would call me. To hang out, you know, I'm going down the city, uh, you know, we're going to go to the China Club, jam right. and everything. I we need a running partner. We call it a running yeah, partner. Yeah, exactly. You have somebody, you know, come to you. Yeah. Helped you out a little bit, yeah. you know what I mean? You know? So we ended we ended up hanging out and then going right. going to China Club, going to right. all these clubs in New York City and, and, and then jamming, going up on stage right. with like Bruce Willis. Right. And, you know, wow. uh, you play jam. But yeah. I used to do that anyway. Everybody thinks like I, I started doing yeah. that with Ace. Did you, did you did play the, the keyboards? when you were at the China Club? Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. you join in with Yeah, join in with the jams and stuff cool. like that. Yeah, yeah a lot of I people mean, played there. We right? played, um, and you mentioned Cafe Y, I think, yeah. and I gotta use my yeah. brain here, Ca uh, the Guns N' Roses drummer, I jammed with him at Cafe Y. Wasn't Steven Adler? Wasn't Steven Adler, it was, uh, yeah, it was a guy before Steven oh, okay. Adler. But go ahead. Yeah, but I knew Steven also, right. Steven Adler, yeah, right. uh, yeah, he had his, uh, stroke, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, yeah. Well, they partied hard. Yeah, yeah. Well, they're talking about partying too. Like back in the day, you partied, like you know, guys partied, but you know, Ace went over the top. Well, he Ace went over it too, you know. Yeah, what I mean? <laughs> you know, when you get the money, it's like you know. Well, that was weird when I, when I hung out with Ace down down the city and stuff right. like that. I mean, Ace would get trash, yeah. you know, I, and he would get falling down drunk, and, and I wasn't like that. Yeah, I, I was a guy. I, I was a teetotaler. Well, maybe I didn't have a beer or two. If you had the fame like him, you could have become like that. And everything that he got because he became like an addict. Yeah, but I toured, with all, I toured with all these yeah. bands and everything. And, right. and early on, I learned what I could tolerate and not, not tolerate. And so I really mm -hmm. taught myself, I got to be, if I'm going to take music seriously, right. I'm not going to get trashed while I'm on tour. Plus I get tired and I yeah. couldn't handle the hangovers yeah. and everything. I mean, you're still young, but yeah. my thing was, I'll admit it, I on TV, yeah. I'll admit it, was I, I girlfriends, girls, yeah. girls, girls. But I, I, I tell you, Ace is so good, he could play blind. Oh, he could be that, sleeping and play. Well, that so, was, 
He's a great guitarist. That was the one mi- of the greatest. The, out mir- there. the miracle of Ace, and you hit yeah. on it, Legend. was he could be, I mean, totally falling down, almost passing out drunk, tra- trashed. We'd be at the China <laughs> Club, and I'm like, it's and like they, Back and, to the Future. Yeah, and, and the guitar, and, he, and boom, yeah, right. It, it was like, a, and, I was like, and, how the hell is he doing wow, this? He cool. go up on the stage and start blasting yeah, yeah, away. Yeah. I'm like. He was just passing out. Just I tell you, I had friends, they just, you know, they have so much musical talent and ability, just put it in their hands and they just, great. It was amazing. It was just great. It, 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 was like a, it was like a, a miracle. It was, really was. It was like, a, how the hell is he pulling this off? But yeah, I learned right. in my early days, not, uh, I couldn't, uh, I, yeah. I got, uh, I learned my lesson with this one show right. with this local band. And we played up in Yorktown Heights, some, right. some big club. I mean, it was like a thousand people there, and I got trashed with with the whole. We had a drinking match in, yeah. in the uh, in the in right. the backstage, whatever. And it was somebody's birthday or something. We're doing shots, shots, yeah. shots, and everything. I'm blasted, and by the f- end of the first set, I was pa- I passed out on the keyboards. I couldn't even go on the wow. second set, and every. Everybody there thought it was funny and great that we were all so wrecked. You, know, and you were like serious musician. I don't want to make a fool out of myself. I made a, I made an yeah, ass out of myself. Yeah, and then yeah. when I woke up the next morning yeah. with a huge wow. hangover, and I go, I just cheated all those people last night. But you they remember, remember though, though? I remember. I'm right. I, mean, I remember that passed remember, out. Right? Yeah. They don't remember. Yeah. That. So I said, I'm never ever going to do that again. Cool. So, so whenever I went on tour, this and that, all the guys would party. They get all, okay. you know, fucked up during the whole tour and everything. And me, I, I was the teetotaler, not teetotaler. Okay. But, the, but the funny thing was, all those guys would pass out. Mm. I'd be the one to get all the women. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I got yeah, that guy's girl. They're, they're passed out. They're ready, not, ready for love. Oh, ready for love. <laughs> now, your love, the second love is, and we're going to talk about right now, is you have books. You became an author. Let's talk about the books, and let's talk about the first book, Kiss and Tell. All right. Here it is right here. Now let's talk about the book. What made you become an author and how'd you get into you know, <laughs> becoming a book? It, you know, it says kiss and, and tell. tell yeah. And you know, well what is the book about? Is it about kiss and tell about kiss? It's, a, kiss. it's actually about my, my relationship with Ace. Okay. And how, how this book would have never got written. Right. It would have, I got to explain right. to everybody. It would have never got written if I didn't have this falling out with Ace and Ace made a problem public. But you gotta give kudos to Ace because mm-hmm. now if Ace wasn't your friend, this book would not be. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. right. You're up to, you're, you're, let, me, let me go in reverse okay. with it also. Right. Um, you know all those books about Elvis by, friend, yeah, by best sure. friends and stuff like that? Yeah, I right hate right. those guys that wrote that book. I understand why I get crap for writing this book because you know, you shouldn't squeal, and you, should, you know, there's things that you shouldn't kiss and tell, you know. All right, but um, I understand that you had a true relationship with Ace, mm. that you did work with him. It's not like you were just a stranger who wrote this book, so. This yeah, is, it wasn't a stranger, but still, I don't like to, ki- you, there's right. a, a woman named Kitty Kelly that wrote a book about Frank Sinatra. Mm. It was like all inside dirt and shit like that, but she did it just because she was friends with Frank Sinatra right. and she ratted him out just to make money. Yeah. But that's not the case with this book. No. So the, the, the reason why this book got written, okay. um, I got into... Uh, now, what year was this now? I, um, tr- now you tax him. You nice. ask a this, question, this tax is a my long brain. time ago. Like 97, 98 I yeah, wrote it. This is yeah. the first one. Yeah. So... Um, All right, okay. About the book. Yeah, the book got written because uh, Ace and I, I... I'll give you the short story. I know we've yeah. been... So we got to talk about the other books. Right, yeah. Um, Ace and I went into business together, right. uh, reluctantly, mm-hmm. um, and Ace screwed me out of a lot, a lot of money, you know, like six figures, a lot of money, and, and he screwed me out of a corporation and everything, which is fine and dandy, not enough reason to write this book. Absolutely not, just because, that, just you because had we had a falling out. out. Right. A lot of Ace Freely fans, I mean, oh, we all love Ace Freely. Yeah. And they're very upset with you. Mm-hmm. We got to we got to give kudos to Ace a little bit. But even but, though yeah, yeah the no, but but, out. The, yeah. but, the, but for right. for good reason and right reason. I right. understand I understand those guys. I understand. No, I'm sensitive to all like Ace Freely fans freaking out over this book. Right. And that and I understand okay. their argument and pointing fingers at me. You no, you rat, <laughs> you wrote this book just just to make money off right. Ace. 
That's not the case, though. And I keep telling these people. That's immature. A bit. No, it's not even immature. I under, that. No, that's okay. the simple answer okay. that I understand where, where they get from A to B. I understand where you're getting from A to B, but it's wrong. Okay. The reason why the book was written was Ace and I had that falling out, but he pointed fingers at me wrong, wrong. Now you were with Bobby He's, McAdams. Bobby so. McAdams, too. Right. Bobby McAdams wrote the book. You don't get the me. slack like you do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Bobby doesn't get uh -oh. the, the, uh -oh. the, the, the crazy. Bobby, they're going to come after you, Bobby. Yeah. Watch out. No, yeah, Bobby's got the goods on Ace. All right, so. so now you have a lot of good stories about, let's do, do that quick because we have these other two. Right. What's in the book? What, it's all fun. About? It's funny Tell shit. Tell everybody because they're going to pick up the book. They have three books. Right, right. right. Kiss to Tell is all right. from my relationship with Ace and all the insane stuff we did hanging out together. Right. I mean, there's, there's lots of funny stories. Right. But, it, I, but we look, when the book was written, we regretfully look yeah. back at those days because right. our, we, we had a falling out. Right. And then when you look at those times, they're not good times anymore. Right. It was like taxing times. Right, they're right. like, you look at it and go, you know, right. was it worth it going all night? You know, to the China Club and yeah. happen to lift Ace up, pass down the floor, throw him in the limo. still here. Yeah. I'm okay. still alive. I survived Ace really. All right. Now, now, well, let's, Crazy go to, stories. Let's, go to, let's go to the second book. This is the sequel. Sequel? To yeah. Okay. Kiss so and Tell this is More. Two. Kiss yep. and Tell More. Now, the first one, you had Bobby McAdam. This one, obviously, this one's just written by yourself. By myself, this right. Like, yeah. You know, this is a sequel. This yeah. book... I had to document all, right. all of the responses from the KISS fans right. that freaked out over the first book. Right. And, I, and it, was, it was like I was getting hate mail, I was right. getting death threats. I have a favorite death threat. Right. <laughs> and people freak out and say, you got a favorite death threat? Right. One KISS fan wrote to me, he goes, if you show up at a KISS expo, at a KISS convention, right. uh, you're braver than Salman Rushdie. Uh -huh. And I was like, whoa, what a cool death threat. It was a very educated, back. veiled wow. threat. Because yeah. I go, well, what KISS fan knows who Salman Rushdie is? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. like, wow, that was a, that was a cool that threat. That was like an educated, yeah, an educated, uh, educated death threat. Really, I like that one. Really. So I give thumbs up for that death threat. Thanks. <laughs> so this is more juicy stories of what happened. It's more juicy stories, yeah. And then the Joe Renda's in there. Uh, Joe Renda discovered the Jerky Boys. Okay. And he had a studio called North Lake Studios, and he has a hilarious stories about Ace. There's more hilarious stories about Ace, cool. but it's it's like a lot of internet hate mail and letters and stuff that I got from fans. Okay, which it's funny to me. But I mean, it's um, it's funny because on the internet everybody's brave behind yeah. a keyboard. They're all like. You suck, I'm gonna kill you. you, you da, da. And then when I go to a Kiss Expo, which I just went to the Helsinki, yeah. Finland, I'm on line, there's a line of people asking for autographs. Right. I talk to everybody, they ask me stories about Ace. Every single person I've met in person has been more than nice oh, to me. Oh, you're lucky. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's you don't want to run into that one guy. Who's been, like, oh, but I have run into that, up. I have actually right. run into that one guy. No, short yeah. side story. Uh, yeah. I did. Uh, 15 countries in 1998 uh, mm -hmm. in Europe, and I was touring. And there was, um, as we're touring, I was with Eric Singer right. doing all the Kiss Expos. And we were going to Belgium. Uh, I think it was Belgium. I hopefully got the country right. If I get it mm -hmm. wrong, don't write letters okay. to me and say I'm a liar. You know? um, I, I, and everybody's, uh, the promoter was saying, don't do Belgium. And we're getting death threats from a, some guy or something. And he says, if you show up there, the guy's going to kill you. I go, that's stupid. That's idiotic. Yeah, right. He goes, why don't you skip that? Why don't you go to Paris or something for a day? You know? I go, no, wow. I'm not I'm going to show up. I'm not, yeah. gonna, right. I'm not, I'm not scared. Yeah. And, and I said, they don't know me. This is why I'm doing the Kiss Expos. I want people to know but not who the stable, guy is. You know, yeah, yeah, I know that. I understand that. Unstable. Absolutely. Crazy so what, uh, long, long story short, yeah. I do the Belgium Kiss Expo. Right. I, hear in the, I do a Q&A, and, and I hear in the back a guy yelling, you're a fucking liar, right? With an accent yeah, and everything. Yeah, yeah. I'm going, and then I'm doing the Q and A with this guy, yeah. Rick, with the, my friend Rick. He's and I go, I go, Rick, what was your that's the guy. I go, that's the fucking guy. I probably did the death threats. And he goes, yeah. You want to get off the stage? I go, no. Call him up here. This is great, right? So confront the guy. Yeah, confront the guy, right? Yeah. I, I says, the guy hates me. I'm, let's have him ask me questions while yeah. I'm up here, right? Yeah, yeah. So Rick goes, all right. I, I go, yo, you in the back. Yo, who's got a problem with me, right? And he goes, yo, you suck. And this, I go, all right, I suck. Come on up here, right? He came up. He came up. Right. And he goes, you lied in your in your book. You know, the kiss. That was only the kiss and tell book right. at the time. You lied in, in the book. I said, well, what's a lie in the book? 
well, Ace Frehley's not really like that. I says, are you friends with Ace? Right? Right, right. And I go, I, I'm sorry. I, I says, I apologize in my, f for you, if you got the, if I ruined your image of Ace right. Frehley. I don't want to be the guy to ruin, tell you there's no Santa Claus. You know, that's what he made right, me out right, to right. be. I was well, the guy, books are controversial. There is Santa Come Claus. On, right. So yeah, so the guy, I mean, going toe to toe, asking right. me all kinds of questions. I wish I could remember that incident. It was really cool. Maybe somebody got it on tape. Yeah. yeah. So right. we were going back and forth for like five minutes, and the guy's really drilling me. And then all of a sudden, I, I said, do you believe everything in history? And all of a sudden, the whole crowd was like applauding. And I go, you think Gene Simmons is telling you the right story? You know, I said this. The, everybody, the, yeah. everybody has their inter their right. interp no their interpretation of the story and the truth. Right. I said there's uh, my side, Ace's side, and the truth or right. God's right. truth or something like that. You know that whole saying. Sure. Everybody applauded again. I said I'm trying to tell you this is why I'm here. The guy came over to my after that. Yeah. You know that mm -hmm. rapport went on. Right. The guy comes over to, I, I said, I'll sign my books over there on yeah. the table. He comes over to me, shakes my hand, buys every single item on the table, had me sign it to him. He made amends. Made amends? A couple of weeks later, yeah. he emails me. He goes, I want you to be the godfather to my son. I was like, you no, got to be on. kidding me. Oh, that is a good story. That, is, that was great. That I'm was like, worth it. to be a good punchline. Right. This no. is a long story. I know. That was, oh. that was awesome. So right. this is this is why I do the Kiss Expos, and okay. everybody has been great to me. I, okay, I, yeah. But let's talk about this book. It's called Rock and Roll War Stories, and uh, you wrote it with somebody, Lynn. Lynn Ramage. Yeah, she's out of Philadelphia. She was uh, she helped me out. She, right. she was great. She she, she had a show, yeah she had access to all these bands out of oh, Philadelphia, and um, no, she was she a promoter down there. Co -wrote she promoted. Yeah, she got all crazy stories from okay. great bands. Talk about this book and what's in this book and how uh, this is has. Is Ace in there? A yeah, little there's bit? a couple of couple of stories about but Ace. This is in there. about other rock and roll people. Well, you know how this came about. This, okay. this is this well, is wild. Okay. Well, the, I had the Kiss and Tell book and Kiss and Tell more, yeah. and I was doing a lot of radio interviews, right. well, a ton of radio interviews, and all all. So I did the show with um, with D. Snyder, House right. of Hair. He has a radio show, House right. of Hair. I know D. Yeah. yeah. So D. said, it's "I'll give you five minutes on my show." I'm like, right. all right, five minutes. Five minutes, yeah. I'm on the House of Hair show, 45 minutes. He's bumping everybody off because we're having a great time. You like to talk and you remember everything. And you have good, good stories and everything, yeah. And then we were going back and forth. Age people. So right. D says, I love the Kiss and Tell book, but I wouldn't want to be your friend. I mean, he's yeah. making jokes and I'm just taking it, you know. <laughs> I, I go, so D started telling, he goes, so I got a great story. Uh, this is before the book came out. This is where the idea for the book well, came out. I hope you out. don't hate you now. What, oh, D? Whatever. No, I love D. D yeah. loves me. He's, he's hates, great. Yep. You hate him or he hates you. No, no, no. I, I got a lot of good celebrity friends. Okay. Everybody doesn't realize that, too. I, I write books about <laughs> Because they're going to be like uh, the Ace Freely friends. They say, Phil, you had him right there. Well, I could be a straggle for <laughs> oh. Ace. Because, you know, hey, we love it's I still, love Ace Freely. You know, I've seen Ace from... Uh, you know, when Kiss, when they first started, but I also was a fan of Freely's Comet. I followed Ace when he started out, first started out, and he, his first gigs in New York City at Lemoore's. And well, let me tell you, for any any Kiss fan like you, or Ace right. Freely fan like you, right. instead of strangling me right now, you should be thanking me right now. And every Ace Freely fan should be thanking me right now. And I'll tell you right now. I'll Why say, is that? Because yeah. I saved Ace's life many times. He wouldn't right. be alive today if it wasn't for but me. But Gene Simmons says he did too. Yeah, everybody did. Sure so yeah, did. there was a lot of people that, right. that saved Ace. There was a, you a, actually loved the guy. Didn't you yeah, love yeah, him? Yeah, we were I best mean, friends. We love him. Yeah. We were fans. No, we we were, him. There was at a point we where we were best friends. Sometimes yeah. I think we love them. Then, then, then they, they love, love themselves. themselves. Yeah. That's, so crazy. That's true. And um, we, we, we dedicate our whole lives to uh, you know buying their uh, material, their music, and right. following them, and, and being like close to them, like friends. Because a lot of... Well, the, the Kiss fans are very dedicated to the band. Oh, absolutely. They're, very They're sensitive the best. They're the best about the everybody. Yeah. Uh, I like the, uh, you know, besides, uh, you know, the original Kiss, you know, the four members. I admired Bruce Kulick and uh, Eric Carr. Right. right. Eric know? was the best. And Eric, Eric, Eric Carr was out of the whole Kiss family. Eric Carr was the greatest guy. I, I actually wish, met him. Yeah, you know? no, I hung out with Eric. And I wish I was more close to Eric than I was to But to also, Ace. Ace was very close with Eric. Too. Eric Ace was, yeah. yeah That's how we had the connection, person. yeah. So, so book. the book I read there, the book, the book. yeah, uh, yeah. D. Snyder story. Right. 
So D, uh, I did the House of Hair, and he loved the Kiss and Tell book. All and he right. goes, I got a story for you that, you know, every cocktail party or whatever party you're at, you tell a story, and then somebody clicks off another story in their head, and they top right. your story. Well, D Snyder. The like same game you played, like, pretty much with the Linda. But you, you, right, you, you you're topping each it. other. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Go ahead. So D goes, it reminds me of a story, yeah. and he, he uh, right. I'll tell this short story, which is in this book. And that's how I got the idea for the book. D uh, was doing this big giant concert. We all know Twisted Sister. Yeah. And you know how D is so animated on stage, I'll like the audience. seen them when they yep. begin. I audience participation, he always right. loves it, right? Yeah. So D's on the stage and he's pointing to the, each section. He goes, I want you to rock and roll and party. Let me hear this section. Yeah. And they're like, Arr. and he goes, this section over yeah. here. And they're a little lame, right? And he goes, this section's lame. This section knows how to rock and roll. Yeah. All throughout the right. whole concert. D runs off to the side of the stage, you know, for the encore. His right. manager walks up to him and goes, boom, punches yeah. him in the face. Wow. He goes, D, what the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah. And he goes, what? That section thing? He yeah. goes, what? He goes, it was the handicap section. Ah. <laughs> and then D was like, oh no. He was mortified. Yeah, wow. So he told me that story. It was hysterical, right? It is kind of hysterical. It's hysterical. Man. It's like, hey, you know, they, they can't react. And D know? actually Maybe said, D we'll said, see you, right? the, the so, funny punchline that D right. said, D goes, my dick shrunk. Yeah. <laughs> so no, that crazy. story, tri I go, D, that no. story is hysterical. I just got an idea. You, you told me a story, and I meet all my other rock star yeah. friends. They tell me stories, I put it in a collection. And that's all in here. That's, so that's all in here. Co a collection that. of really okay. historical rock and roll war stories. Okay, yeah. now you had to fall out with Ace. Let's put the book down. Ah. <laughs> let's let's, let's uh, try to like make people understand that, hey, you know, it didn't work out. We were friends for a while. The books came out. Right. How is everything today like pretty much? I mean, you don't talk to Ace, obviously, no more. But no. Bobby McAdams still talks to Ace. Yes. Right. Yeah. And it's kind and of. And I like, talk to Bobby well, every day. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Bobby's in Florida, and we're we're. we're do, you, do you ever feel like you can ever like uh, become friends? Maybe with Ace if he apologized and made amends to you and and say, look, hey, you know, why? Why I, hold? Why you holding that? I, 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 it's why? not a matter of holding. Well, I have no desire to go why? back to to. Work. Not go back to it, but make amends and and apologize there, and, and just at least. Bury the hatchet with this thing and get it over with. Because there's you know? deep, Why? there's deeper reasons that I didn't. Everybody right. says, thinks I kiss okay, and hold everything. Okay, but that's that's your business. There's much that's more deeper reasons and uh, okay. very good reasons. You and sure about that? Absolutely. Put it this way: Ace right. would have to uh, acknowledge an incident and and be truly sorry for someone. Right. Um, that is no longer here. Uh, so then it is possible. No. Because <laughs> Ace will so never why, do why it. Would you, why would you say that? Maybe no, he, would. he would not acknowledge. Because well, I know, because I know friends, I know people that know Ace, and okay. they, Ace knows the story. He doesn't give a shit, and and that's unfortunate. He just, well, he's that's, just a, this is out there. So if he sees this, I don't know if he'll watch. I, it doesn't matter. I, I have no desire to pack friends with Ace. Yeah, but you're just saying right now. You're telling me that if he came and did that. You would consider maybe that. No, no, I would consider not, forgiveness. That's all. Right. All right, so no, it's no, out there. All right, you heard it. I, I, I would oh, Come on. Yeah, right. I, I would consider forgiveness if he had not. Okay. Me okay. hanging all out right. with Ace again. All no, right, but I didn't mean gone. that. Yeah. Yeah. Let's get that over with and make amends. You know, this, this is like, like a film This here. is like, you know. <laughs> no, it's good. Sometimes, no, you know, good. No, it no, does, yeah. it does. You don't want to live with that forever. You know, no, I understand. Right. Well, you got a good heart. Yeah, you got to love each other. Like yeah, you said. Love, we like to love, love each other in this world. We got too many lunatics out there. You're right. People yeah. need to like, you know, forget the hate and let's let's move yeah, forward. But, oh, that's right. another thing. Everybody misconceives the book as a hate right. book. It's not a hate book. It's a, we're New Yorkers. Right. You know how tough skins we, we are. went through New York, a lot. Yeah, New we're New not York is living a real, in a farm. Yeah. We're living in the city. There's a lot of things going on. We went through the 70s, the 80s, mm -hmm. the 90s. We experienced a lot of things. I was part of the whole rock and roll scene, you know what I mean? We did a lot of things. We did a lot of crazy things, you know? Yeah, New, when New York culture have real right. tough skin. Like when, when, right. when there's like, like when people rank, I don't know if they know the term, ranking. Or even 9-11 like, yeah, rank, happened. But we ranking, lived through that. Yeah, but we ranking on other people right. or we all have tough skins and, and, and like uh, people see that from I'll the Midwest so and go, oh my God, how can you say that about them? The other person doesn't give a shit. You know, Ace is a New Yorker. Yeah. He doesn't care. He, he, we got to roll with the punches. He would laugh at the book. You right. know, cool. Gene loves the book. Paul loves the book. 
Peter Chris is like on the fence with everything. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not like everybody in the Kiss family hates the book. There's certain guys who love it, and certain yeah. guys hate Were it. Were you friends with, uh, uh, with Peter Chris a little bit? Cause Bob was more friends with, with Peter um, and uh, Ace. I was more uh, friends with, with the secondary guys, Bruce Kulick and, uh, mm -hmm. and Eric Singer right. I hung out with. Uh, and, I mean, all those secondary Kiss guys, uh, okay. I know. And I see them all at the, I do a lot of Kiss Expos and, and, uh, and you and, liked uh, and, uh, Eric. Was a great Eric guy. Carr was the nicest guy out yeah. of all. I, I mean, that, the, 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 it, 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 he was an amazing yeah. guy. Yeah, yeah. he, he so was friendly. the guy I loved. He would do anything for the fans. He was the, the he, was the he was the best guy. Ego at all, yeah. you know what I mean? But Bruce is kind of like that. Bruce is a great too. guy. He's I mean, I'm, I'm sure Gene is really cool, and I've talked to Paul and everything. But I don't know, you know, we ain't a girl, you know. What I mean, like you know, back in the day, they were just like, ah, oh, if you're a girl, they wanted to talk to you. If you weren't a girl. They weren't, yeah, really they weren't interested in talking to you. Yeah, yeah I right. Mean, now they're more like, you know, civilized and Gene matured a lot and so did Paul. Mm -hmm. And the fan it is, you know, from you know, nah, you, you're them. a huge fan. Yeah. Nah, 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 we yeah. go back and forth with all the crazy <laughs> stuff in this story. I've seen them like a hundred thousand times, right. you know, at least a hundred times. I saw Kiss once. Right. I've only seen oh, him yeah. once. Wow. And that was from yeah. Eric Carr. Eric Carr invited me yeah. to uh was at Eric's first show. oh really? It was a hot hot in the shade. it was a great tour. Out in Meadowlands, right. yeah, I, and Eric Carr invited me to go see Kiss, and I was like, I might as well go see the band. Yeah. Uh, the drummer, yeah, it's, it's great drummer. Double bass, oh, yep. only really a good rock drummer. I, I remember hanging out with Eric Carr when Eric auditioned guitar players for Ace for Philly's Comedy, right, right. and Eric Carr uh, sat in. Still stuff stayed friends with Ace. Yeah, yeah. And, and Ace the, had a lot of great musicians working with him. Unbelievable. Yeah, he had, he had, he had John Reagan. Anton yeah. Fig, Anton John Fig, Reagan. Yeah. Uh, Richie Scarlet. Richie Scarlet, yeah. Jamie yeah. Oldacre. Yeah. Uh, he had phenomenal nice. musicians. It was great. Yeah, right, cool. All right, well, I enjoyed the speaking oh. with you, but now let's tell everybody how they can find out more about you and how they can pick up the book and you know, so we could we can get this thing done, man. We were been talking for a while. <laughs> Everybody's you listening. Can, they can stay you can in edit touch. the story. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, Facebook, obviously, you find yeah. anybody on, on on the internet and everything. Right. Yeah, just uh, friend me on Facebook. Tell I, everybody, I Gordon. People. Now you have your, your initials in there. Tell the Gordon G G Gabbert. Okay. Yeah, um, just Google that, and then you'll see all the the right. good stuff and all the bad stuff. <laughs> Sorry. Right. Um, the good and the bad. The good and the bad and the ugly. <laughs> um, we aren't ugly. We're still pretty. We're still, <laughs> we still got. We aged well. We aged well, right? Absolutely. You take care of yourself. Blast. You can get in there. It's a blast. Well, I want to thank you very much. You're, you're a gentleman. No, nice thank guy. You, Phil. You thank great you. stories. You know, wonderful being, you know, friends with you for a certain amount of time on Facebook. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully, everybody will watch the interview and pick up the books and, and just be friends with the guy. Let's be a little normal out there on the Doesn't internet matter. world. This is what he experienced. Well, thank, thank you for you. the opportunity. Hey, great. we'll watch New York rocks. Who rocks better than us, man? Who? You, <laughs> Phil. Nobody. You rock the best. You rock Remember, the best. New York rocks the best. <laughs> All right, man. Peace out, everybody. Thank you.